Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and I'd start with an apology uh, with this video for the fact that there hasn't been very much programming content of late. Um, even the people on my gaming channel have noticed that there's been an overall decrease in content, but that hasn't hurt, uh, hit um, that channel as much as my programming channel. It's just the fact of the matter is, I've been in a little bit of a funk for the last couple of months. It's been extraordinarily hard to sort of sort of get interest and, and passion in doing just about anything. Um, things have been tough. I don't want to go into it, uh, but it's just been it's just been difficult to get there. And and I, I, I haven't liked that. That, that's not me. I'm the sort of person who usually gets like way into something and becomes very obsessive about it for a while. Uh, but for a variety of reasons, that hasn't really been hitting of late. And uh, really, that's the sort of juice I need to get the programming stuff going on. However, however, I've been working and, and prepping on some stuff lately, and I think I have a project that is really going to be a big hit. So the sort of thing that I think, honestly, like Project Porcupine was a huge hit that we started, uh, like, we started a while ago. That went for over a year, and I think it was very fantastic. But honestly, if there's anything that's sort of my dream project, it's something more like this. I'm going to be calling this Project Caprica, and we are going to be making together, as part of a series of Yubtub videos, a classic 4X space game. 4X, of course, stands for Explore, Expand, Exploit, and Exterminate. Basically, what we're going to be doing is a clone of Master of Orion, which is one of my all-time favorite games. Specifically, Master of Orion 2, for me, was my real, like, big game that, to me, possibly got me more addicted to computer games than anything else. I think that was the first one that really, really did for me. I've been, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm old, old, old ish I'm, uh, well, I'm going to turn 40 next year. I've been playing video games my entire life as well, and there's been plenty that I've always loved, but I think that that Moo, and may, maybe Master of Magic, and this is sort of around the same time for me, um, really, really brought me into gaming to a, in a degree that I had never experienced before. And I think it's entirely fitting that we try to make a clone of that. So we're talking about a strategy game here that um, operates on multiple levels. We've got a galactic map, we've got a system map, we've got ship battles, we've got all this. We've got a mix of 3D elements is the way I'm thinking of doing it. Like I think our, our sort of galactic view, now while our galaxy will probably be a, a flat plane, in terms of, it's just much, much more playable, much more easier, easy to display it to the user. There's no extra difficulty whatsoever in having sort of like a 3D field that you pan around and whatever, but I don't think it's as playable. I think your, your classic sort of like 2D-ish sort of flat galaxy, which I mean, the galaxy is more or less a disc in, in reality as well, I think is probably the most playable way, but I want 3D elements to represent the stars and in the uh, in a system view, like you sort of zoom in and you get a, or you get a pop-up window perhaps with a system view, which is a whole other thing that I want to look at. I want to look at um, a sort of layered graphical user interface where you have windows that open up and have their own sort of maybe 3D view inside of there. So always looking for ways to introduce sort of new concepts that we haven't looked at before. Um, I want that to sort of be 3D-ish, you know, so the ship graphics and that, but um, for a lot of the game to be 2D. So you get that interesting sort of blend of 3D and 2D, which I think we'll, uh, we'll have to sort of solve and look at a few different techniques that we haven't looked at before. Uh, we're going to talk about how having a lot of different screens, right? This is not the sort of game that's just played from one point of view. Like if you look at something like a, a Pac-Man or a Mario Brothers, right? It's basically just got one view. I mean, you might load a different level, but it's just one gameplay scenario. Whereas this, you're gonna have very different views. The galactic view, maybe the system view, which may or may not be a variant of the galactic view or maybe its own thing, but then you're talking about things like technology screens, diplomacy screens, or even you've got a system view, but if you click on a planet, that's probably its own view to manage the planet itself. I mean, if we do go all the way with sort of copying some of the base Master of Orion style mechanics, you have your classic sort of um, each unit of population can be changed between, say, farmer, uh, worker, and scientist, for example. Um, now, one of the things with clones, mechanics, game mechanics and things like that, um, you can duplicate in other games. We'll clearly have to have some variation. We can't just be an exact one-for-one -one copy of Master of Orion. Obviously, there'll be different graphics to start off with, but things like um, technology names, and maybe we'll, we'll redo how the technology system system is, is organized or, or come up with different ways of doing stuff. I like, I've always liked the, um, 
the Waymaster of Ryan did technology, though. The different technology categories and the fact that at each level, you'd have somewhere between two to maybe four different options, and you could only research one of them, unless you were creative. Uh, you could only have one of those, which meant that you were going to have different technologies than other people, and you could take different um, paths different times, right? One time you could be like, okay, I'm going to focus on missiles. Now, focusing on missiles means it's going to come at a cost of armor and fuel technology, but maybe you can make up for that in other ways. And another time you'd be like, okay, I'm going to focus mostly on um, particle weapons. Okay, well, or, or things like um, mass drivers. Well, mass drivers mean you're researching that instead of shields because it's both in the field tech. I've always thought that was fantastic, and I think it's the sort of thing that I would like to riff on. I have to say, one of the things I was always incredibly impressed with with Stellaris was the way that Stellaris implemented their technology system. To me, it was kind of an homage to Master of Orion. I mean, a different thing. There weren't there weren't discrete tech levels where you're picking only one tech from each level, but in Stellaris, you're still presented with a list of, you know, three to whatever technologies, depending on, on various things, and you're only picking one to research at this time, and it might be a while before you see those technologies come back again. And uh, I like those kind of decisions. I think they're great. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of different elements that all sort of interact with each other in a variety of different ways. So we're going to need a good sort of like event messaging system. We can't have like all this spaghetti code that like calls others and have to be fixed in, in, um, in interesting ways to try to, you know, or not interesting ways, but pain in the ass ways to try to get everything going again. Um, we're going to have turn-based strategic gameplay, gameplay, which continues to be something I have a big, a lot of questions sent my way about, right? It, it's sort of easy to, to sort of program something that's that's in a continuous flow, especially something that's very object-driven, like in a sort of physical object kind of sense, which obviously Unity is very well set up for that. that. But this sort of strategic turn-based more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like not symbolic, but but a little bit more abstract mechanics, where it's not just a physics object that's moving around, I guess would be the way to say it. I uh, always get tons of questions about that. So it'll be another good way for us to address that once again. And if we implement something like the classic Master of Orion combat system, there's this whole other sub mode that happens in move. If you haven't played it before, by the way. Um, so you move your ships basically on the galactic map. And in Master of Orion, you, it's your classic sort of star system that that you just hyperspace lane from one to the other. And there, there, there may be fixed lanes or, or Sometimes, it, it, I guess in Mood there wasn't fixed lanes. I'm trying to remember. I feel like in... It's been so long. Oh my gosh. I know that in the, the, the new Master of Orion there are fixed hyperspace lanes. I don't think that Master of Orion 2 had fixed hyperspace lanes. But you could only go point to point from system to system. And then when if your ships were in the same system as an enemy fleet, then combat would happen. And that would be a whole other screen. And so you get this sort of like duality modes. How do you deal with that? Do you load a different scene? Or do you just load in a sort of, a, an almost sort of prefab draw object where may, that might not be got loaded in as much as like toggled on that like um, you have the, your scene hierarchy you actually have whole components of it that you disable like you disable the parent of the entire galactic screen and then enable the parent of the battle scene and then you tell the battle scene oh and by the way load these ships in here and then go so there's tons of questions to sort of resolve in those sorts of things um, and I have the features list here is basically the features that uh, we would probably like to see in the game so you explore the galaxy, possibly via hyperlands, and we can talk about map generation and stuff, which is cool. You can colonize and develop planets, research to unlock new buildings and ship parts, as well as um, you might have things like new government types or just um, static bonuses. Uh, customizing ships would be a whole, huge question mark. Diplomacy, space battles, planetary invasions, multiple victory conditions, you know, highest score, a uh, science victory, which might be unlocking some super late game tech and then building an associated, you know, super building for it or just killing everyone else, or there might be other types of victory conditions. Um, uh, Galactic Civilization is a good example of a game that has a bunch of different victory conditions, which is kind of cool to look at. Or um, another one would be, I mean, even just Civilization or um, Alpha Centauri had a lot of different options like that. So that's cool to talk about. Now, in the post I made on the Patreon website about, uh, I think, eight hours ago as I'm recording this, I did the post on the Patreon website. And I've been thinking about it more and prepping some more stuff and things. Uh, I talked about doing a kickoff this Saturday uh, on stream because I want to have a discussion about it. However, depending on how the schedule works out, there's a possibility. I'm recording this Thursday night. I'm going to try. I don't know if this is entirely going to work out, but I would like to maybe do an initial setup video, if I can, tomorrow morning, which would be Friday, 
get it up on YouTube by the end of that day so that we have a bit of a a little bit of a something something to talk about. And the idea with Saturday is Saturday is less going to be a programming stream and more of a let's have a discussion about this project. Uh, let more people know about it. Direct them to um, maybe the the initial sort of intro video as well as I'll set up a GitHub page that's going to be set up uh, hopefully maybe to start some comments or something like that. We'll, we'll see how that works um, and, and get some feedback and discussion started about what kind of mechanics and features people might want to see. But I am going to be working this very much like Project Porcupine, where initially I'm going to be trying to do the initial work to set up the the sort of skeleton, the bare bones version of the game mechanics. And I'll be posting everything on GitHub as I go, and it will be open sourced um, throughout. And then at a certain point, we'll I'll invite a sort of like group of people to to participate in working on this project and keeping it going from there. I will. It'll be. Uh, most likely, the stuff I start with, I'll, I'll probably again do the same thing I did in Project Porcupine, which would be start with sort of like the MIT license, which is basically a free for all. And then when we turn things over to the community and a community run project, probably put it under GPL and really, you know, people can fork, people can set up their whole, their own hierarchies for contributing work and things like that and get it to go from there. So, you know, hopefully it could end up being a real game, but also a fantastic learning project. So that's my hope going forward. I think because we are copying something, here's, here's the thing, and I've always said this, if you're starting programming, copy an existing game. And I, I usually encourage people to start with something like Pong or Tetris or Pac-Man or something like that, right? Work their way up to something like Mario Brothers. What it means at that point is that you have an idea about what the game design is supposed to look like, how the game is supposed to work. And then the question is, how do I make it work that way? And I think with this, because we're gonna start very much with, okay, we're gonna work with existing sort of mechanics and sort of work with that. And then add our own custom content from that point on, you know, maybe develop our own mechanics. I think it's gonna be a really good way to be able to move ahead very quickly with the project. So that's the hope. And again, it is gonna be a primarily a YouTube thing. I am gonna have this one stream, this portion of the Saturday stream for us to have a discussion about this, get it going again. But uh, hopefully this is gonna be something that will be just as successful as Project Porcupine was. I mean, I know that like interest in continuing to develop Project Porcupine in the community sort of um, petered off after some time. And fair enough, that's often gonna happen. But we still have a really amazing piece of code that people can go through and look at and learn, both from the original tutorials, but then the amazing stuff that people did afterwards is incredible. And if you haven't ever looked at it, I definitely encourage you to go and check that out. So hopefully we're gonna be back to more regular programming content. We're really looking forward to working on this project. I'm looking forward to programming again. Again, things have been a little bit wonky with me for, I, I don't like to talk about personal stuff at all, but it's been very, very difficult to get in the right mindset for most things, including just playing games, let alone programming. But uh, I think we're gonna get back into it and it'll be nice to get back into this, uh, this little, sort of little ritual again. So thanks for watching, thanks for being patient, and I'll see you guys next time.